All right, how's it going, y'all? So today is going to be a video that I set up all the time for my clients, and that is how to use a Synology NAS with remote video editors. These can be remote contractors, or these can also just be people who are remote employees who need to be able to video edit, not in the main studio, so not on the main network, and instead need to be able to video edit out of their homes or whatever they're doing. And there's a lot of different ways we can do this, but these are going to be the three major ways that you can actually set this up and get the overall best performance. Each of these will have its own strengths and weaknesses depending on your exact setup. There's no one size fits all for this. It becomes so dependent on what codecs you're using, what your turnaround time is, what your internet speed is, what your remote editor's internet speed is, what the setup is. There's so much you can choose from. And so there's no really one size fits all, but these three options are gonna be the basis for pretty much anything you could want to do. And there's actually kind of multiple versions of each of them that I'm gonna go over here. This is not going to be a straight tutorial on how to set each of them up. Really, this is going to be, hey, these are the different options you can use, and these are the different setups you can do. By the way, I do this professionally with a lot of video production houses. If you'd like to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. All right, so now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and start with number one. And number one is by far the easiest to set up for both you and your remote contractor, client, whatever. And that is just simply using a proxy workflow and just having them download the files. You can either use a proxy workflow or a full workflow if they're short videos, and you can just use Synology Drive to just send them a link to the files, and they're going to be able to download them onto their computer and then upload them back to you. This is by far the easiest setup because you just send them a link and then they've got access to it. It's your choice whether or not you want to go for a proxy workflow or a full workflow, but the value in this one really comes down to ease of use. You don't have to train anybody on anything like that. Everybody's just able to do it and it just kind of makes sense. There are a lot of cons with this workflow. First off, there's absolutely no synchronization. It is basically throw it over the wall and then see what they come back with a few weeks later or whatever. However that setup is, there's really no easy way to collaborate because they have a separate set of files and then you have a separate set of files. And so that's its probably biggest downfall, as well as the fact that if you have hundreds of video clips, you have to have them download all of them and maybe you add a couple more, now they've got to figure out what that is. There's no synchronization. So this is only really good for stuff that is very simple, ideally smaller file sizes in general, that you can just throw over to them and they can download themselves. Setting this up is incredibly easy. All you have to do is come into Synology Drive, and just right click and share a file with them. And then they just get a link that they can use to download. You can also just give them an account on the NAS and they just log in through this Synology Drive web interface, just like Google Drive essentially. This is really just a simple Google Drive or Dropbox workflow where you just use the NAS as a basically Google Drive. They can download and upload files to it and that's how you stay in sync. This it's great for simplicity, but you lose all that collaboration. And what if they accidentally add some clips and they don't upload them? Well, now down the line, you might not have access to that stuff. So there are a lot of flaws with this one. One other thing to know, this workflow will be accelerated greatly if you're using Quick Connect. If you open up ports 5000 and 5001 TCP to the NAS, and that way you will get much faster download speeds by your remote editors. And so that is one thing. If you're using Quick Connect and the Quick Connect relay servers, it can be quite slow otherwise. When it comes to a proxy only version of this, the advantage of that is they don't have to download the entire massive files. Instead, you create proxies on your end. You upload the proxies as well as the clip to them. Then they go do all the editing. They upload back that project to you and you relink it on your end and you re-export it at the full resolution. That way they can upload with the proxies and you can do the full quality so you don't lose anything. Obviously, that's not great for colorists, but for everybody else who's just a video editor, that should not be a big deal. I also do want to mention, all three of these workflows can be done in tandem. You can have some contractors who you do this with because you know, you're just starting out with them. It's a TikTok reel or whatever. You're sending that stuff on over to them and it's a really short turnaround time stuff and it's simple. That's a great workflow for this. You don't have to give them an account. You really can just have them have their own section. Then you can also use two and three for your more standard workers who are doing this more often. All right, so that was number one. 
it is by far the most boring and clunky, but simplicity works a lot of the time, especially with people who are not very technology savvy. Number two is now going to be similar, but now with synchronization. If you've ever used Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive, you'll know that there's a thing called on-demand sync where you can actually sync your files with the cloud. Synology Drive has the exact same thing. So number two is using Synology Drive to sync with either their computer or a NAS at their office. So that way, those two folders stay in sync. You can set this up where you've got contractors who have a USB drive that basically just syncs with your NAS. And so anytime there's a change, they're reflected in both places. Same thing with a NAS itself. So that's really up to you. The big advantages of this is now they're in sync. If you make a change on your end, they see it. As soon as they hit save on that project file, it's gonna start uploading to your NAS. So that makes collaboration possible again. You don't have to just throw stuff over the wall and wait for them to be done to see what's been going on. No, you can actually go in and say, hey, I wanna check on this, close out your project, they save it. Once it's synced back to your NAS, you can open it on your end and boom, now you see everything they've been working on. You can live talk, you can make some edits on your system that will then be synced back to their system. This is a great workflow and even better is stuff is automatically downloaded in the background. You can set it to automatically be downloading anytime anything changes. So if you're working with this contractor all the time, you can just tell them to leave their computer on when you know you're about to be dumping footage in. And then over the course of the night when they're sleeping, your NAS is sending footage to either their NAS or their computer. If they're on a computer, you just install the Synology Drive client on their computer. You give them an account on the NAS and access to the folders you want them to sync. Then if you're going the second Synology route, it's just as easy. You give them a Synology. It doesn't even need to be as powerful as yours. You can just say, you get a Synology and it's gonna sync this, 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 and this. And so that way, it's always syncing in the background. You don't have to wait for them to turn their computer on because the NAS is always on, always syncing. Other really great advantage of using two NASs for this workflow is it's a backup. You have an offsite backup that is actually constantly tested because you're having somebody edit from it. And so that way, if the NAS at the office ever goes down, you can keep working because you know that footage on that other box has been tested because people have been editing from it. And so it's a very great way to have an offsite backup as well as actually be able to have remote contractors work on this. The biggest downside of this, and it's the same thing with number one, is footage size. If you're shooting a terabyte of footage and have not necessarily the best internet on both systems and have a somewhat short turnaround time, it is hard to keep the NASs in sync just because you only have so much upload speed. Also, if your contractor is in a different country all the way across the world, that will also increase these download times where it's taking longer and longer to sync the further across from the globe y'all are due to the speed of light adding latency. So this workflow is great for having a bunch of different people, but it is more complex than just giving them a link where they can easily download footage and upload. Where this really shines is for people who have smaller projects who are working with the same contractors over and over and over again. Say you've got an employee whose job it is to start editing the footage every Saturday. The footage is done every Thursday. Basically what happens is you just make sure their computer is on or their NAS is on if you're using the NAS method. And then as soon as you upload the footage to your NAS, it just starts syncing across. And that way, by the time they start work on Monday, they have a full copy of everything that's on your system. Another great thing about this is you never have the issue where somebody does not include all the assets that they were using in Google Drive. Instead, now you keep everything in the same folder, so any assets they add to the project will be automatically uploaded without them doing anything. This also gives the best performance because they're actually editing off of a local SSD. It just syncs back to the NAS automatically. And so you get the best of both worlds. So if you're working with insanely high bitrate footage, you essentially have a sync. The last downside I wanted to mention here is the workflow works a lot better on Windows in my experience because Windows has a much better on-demand sync than Mac OS does. If you are on Mac OS, you can absolutely get this workflow working. It just comes down to the fact that you have to be good about what folders are downloaded. And so if you're constantly having a bunch of different projects and 
the user only has to download it certain ones, this can be a very tough workflow if you don't want them downloading everything. Another downside of this workflow is something you just cannot get around, upload speed. If you just do not have enough upload speed at the office where the footage is housed, this workflow will not work. Or if you're just working on massive files that are maybe shot in ProRes or uncompressed RAW files, that is where it's just so hard to get this workflow to make sense because it requires the footage to actually leave your network. If you have two editors who both need the footage, now you've got to upload 2x the speed. So that is the biggest downside with this workflow, and it's the exact same thing with the previous workflow, is you have to have a really fast internet on both sides to get this to work. And so those two issues are where number three shines. Number three is essentially cheating. Number three is taking your remote video editing workflow and making it into a local video editing workflow using software such as Jump or Parsec. And so the setup for this is actually really simple. You essentially just buy another computer or a server if you wanna have a bunch of editors working off one machine and you leave it in your office. You then install something like Parsec on there and you have your remote contractor remote directly into the device. These support multiple screens and so multiple displays with very low latency video. And so there are a lot of video production houses who genuinely do not have a single employee coming in anymore. They just have an entire room full of desktop PCs with blank monitors. Whenever somebody comes in, they basically just remote in using Parsec or Jump and they get local access to the device. The footage never has to leave the office. You can be shooting 8K crazy high bitrate footage that's 100 gigabytes a minute and somebody can edit that the next day because as soon as it gets on the NAS, they have full access to it. This is the huge advantage of that. The footage never has to leave the local network. This is especially great for people who are shooting massive amounts of footage who don't need all of it. You can just have people cut through it so quickly. So right here, I've got Parsec installed on my machine right here. And I'm just gonna remote into it. And just like that, we are in. So you can see I'm connected to the computer right behind me and I can go in and just switch displays and be video editing directly off of this. This is not great because I've got a 5K monitor right there and I'm just on a laptop screen here so the resolution's a little bit off. But you can do full video editing right here with audio pass through and everything like that. It is really simple because you don't have to have a beefy computer for each of your contractors. Instead, you just have the one and every contractor can remote into that. The other big advantage to it is it integrates with all the standard local video editing setups. So for example, Premiere has Premiere multi-editor mode. That works just fine here because it's like the person is locally in the office. It's just they're hooked up to a monitor anywhere in the world. Parsec also has remarkably low latency. If we come up here, right now, because I'm on a local network, we have sub millisecond network latency, and the encode and decode time all add up to about 30 milliseconds of actual latency between the two. Anything under probably 100 milliseconds, your video editor will slightly notice, but be able to really easily compensate for it. It is super easy to use anything that's under 100 milliseconds because it's a tenth of a second. Your brain is hardly able to really discern that difference and it's able to compensate for it after a little while. The editor may need a little bit of time to get used to, yet yeah, you hit the space bar a tenth of a second earlier to get the cut where you want it, but as soon as you get that, you will easily have that. If you're shooting at 24 FPS, your frame time is 40 milliseconds. So right now, my encode and decode, my overall latency on this network is less than the time of a single frame shooting 24 frames per second. And so it can be incredibly low latency. Your network latency will increase off of this. These are literally connected right next to each other, but it's still very fast depending on your ping times. You can pretty easily have 10 millisecond ping times and that will keep you at very, very, very low latency. This also supports really, really, really high resolution and encoding. And so we're getting full 4K video out to this machine that I can see. It's really easy to use. 
and has a full audio pass through. And the pro versions also have like multiple displays and everything like that. And this is really the end all be all solution for people you're working with all the time. And especially if you have massive files, there's really no better way of doing this because the files never have to leave the office. You have one really powerful NAS that everybody's working off of. And now it doesn't matter if your guys are in the office or if they go home for the day, they can still pull the exact same footage in the exact same way. It unifies everybody's access to the NAS from remote contractors to local editors. And so you never have to relink footage because everybody's accessing the NAS in the exact same way. It's just they're remoting into a local desktop. It also saves money because you can buy one really beefy actual video editing machine. And if you know virtualization, you can actually set up every single person to share that. And you'll just give them each their own graphics card essentially. And they'll all have an awesome time. It's actually a pretty common workflow and can simplify things so much. All right, well, that's the gist of this. This was not necessarily a super in-depth video on exactly how to set all these up, but it is overall the ways to look at for your setup. All three of these can be used at the same time, given different setups. So you're not limited by any one of them and you can pick and choose whatever works and makes the most sense to you. If you have any other questions or you'd like to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. All right, have a good one. Bye.